Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Wrist From Off The Cuff. Today we have a really cool watch for you uh, from a watch brand uh, that I've reviewed in the past and I just have been really taken by. This is the Trasco watch brand and this is your uh, Summiteer. This thing is absolutely outstanding. I'm just going to get this out of the way. I'm going to gush a little bit about the watch because that's how impressed I was by it. But a little bit about the brand. If you haven't already heard about Trasco, they're headquartered out of Jacksonville. I'm sorry, it's Jacksonville Beach uh, in Florida. They're founded by a guy named John Mack, um, which is uh, his story is, is really, really quite interesting, uh, but really his intention was to bring watches to you guys and the watch community for people, you know, that you could just really wear without worrying about it. Uh, you know, a real tool watch fit for any activity. Uh, as far as kind of his story is, he he studied international business and, uh, and and Chinese culture. He spent a semester abroad, you know, in China, and he actually learned that you know many of the lower tier Swiss brands actually produce their watches in China um, because of the regulations as far as Swiss made, right? Uh, so you just need it to have sixty percent of the value come um, out of Swiss parts. Uh, normally, of course, you're going to have a fully Swiss made movement, and then final assembly was done in. Switzerland. But for the most part, that meant a lot was being produced overseas. And of course, China is one of those places um, where as far as production goes, you're going to be able to uh, really get your bang per buck. And uh, they've really refined their skills. So basically, while his uh, during his uh, visit, it just kind of spurred him to, to, you know, visit several factories and, and really you know, see if that was the case. Um, and sure enough, he saw big names on the assembly line, uh, which really prompted him to kind of turn his love for watches, uh, the Chinese culture, and as well as internal, international business um, to kind of a real entrepreneurial endeavor, uh, which is Trasco Watches. Now, once he graduated from university back in uh, December of 2016, uh, you know, he got the ball rolling with this, um, has been really working closely, uh, you know, with various on-site factories to uh, to develop prototypes and, uh, you know, production models. And and uh, the Freediver being kind of his first release and now this being his uh, sophomore outing. And I got to say, I'm even more impressed uh, with this model than I was with his original uh Watch the free driver, which I absolutely adored. I actually even reviewed it twice. It was I reviewed um, the uh, you know the prototype and then the 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 full on model. Um, and uh, hopefully I will do the same here and review this as a prototype and then come back and touch base and follow up again with you guys with the production model. But with all that said, um, you know this is of course an everyday watch. Uh, some key commentary tricks and design language when you're looking for an everyday watch. Uh, you're really just going to want a sport, uh, versatile blend of sporty and dressy attributes, which I think the Summiteer really, really does a great job at. So uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look. All right. So as you can see in hand, it's a very simple watch, right? It's very classically designed. Of course, it does have the 369 dial with the triangle at 12, which are going to make you think, uh, you know, kind of Explorer vibes, uh, Tudor Ranger vibes. But this watch is so much more um, than, than just an homage. I wouldn't even consider it homage, uh, maybe homage in, in the most complimentary way in that, uh, you know, it does honor the watches that come before it with its real classical kind of mid-century aesthetic um, while still adding all the modern, you know, bells and whistles that you're going to get um, with today's technology advances as far as fit and finish as far as um, you know having a hardened coating over it I mean you guys might remember from my freediver video I literally did a scratch test I'm running I was, I was blown away by how scratch resistant it was and I just feel like man I almost wish that like all companies would uh, would would really especially if you're going for something that's gonna be a sports watch I um, mean a tool watch it's really great although you know it does give it a, a bit of a different look and tone to it I'd say similar to the to the Dia shield that you would see on Seiko's um, except I would think that this is actually a lot more scratch resistant but it gives you that similar tone to where it kind of blends and plays uh, with the brushing to to give it a, uh, a certain kind of tone um, that probably isn't easily picked up on camera. But once you see it in person and, and you know, you kind of get it in the steel, uh, I, I think it's really easy to see that it does have a little bit of a different sheen to it, but uh, definitely not a bad thing. And you can see that this black, this charcoal black dial is reading super black right now. 
but you give it a little light and you can see that it does take on some life, some dimension there. You get some visual visual interest with that nice kind of multi-dimensional plane there because you do have that inner uh, lower section, which I think is really nice and something they didn't have to do, but I'm glad that they did because one of the beautiful things about this watch is although it's only a 38 millimeter watch, guys, um, the dial is so expansive that it wears larger uh, visually. Uh, of course, on the wrist, it's going to wear perfectly because it's a 38, right? That's just a great size. It has short lug to lug width at 46 millimeters. It has a very nice, tight 10 millimeter, um, you know, profile there. But the beautiful thing is that because of this expansive dial, you're still going to get that grace, great wrist presence, which is something that, you know, I talked about it in, a, in a, one of my rambles and rants, basically about that dial proportion, case, dial, bezel proportion. It's huge. Um, and what this does, it uses those the right way. You're going to be able to get that visual impact to where it's going to be very striking and not wear small. Um, it's going to wear the right way though on the wrist and it's not going to be oversized uh, because the case uh, dimensions or proportions are the right scale um, being a bit smaller and uh, being something that's really, really versatile and classic looking. Now, these are actually going to go for $500 um, direct from Traska. Uh, the Kickstarter is actually going to start, I believe, uh, next Monday, uh, depending on when you're watching this video. But on October 28th, the Kickstarter is going to open. And I believe they're even going to have early bird prices of $400, which is just mind-blowing for the amount of watch you're going to be getting uh, at that price point. Now, the, the hardness of the extra you know the, that that hard coating adds is basically an extra thousand vickers so on the hardness scale this is going to be that much more it's probably like 200 250 vickers uh for regular stainless steel this is going to be around 1250 right so very very impressive um super scratch resistant um i mean just where i couldn't scratch it you know um i i don't want to do a scratch test on this one you know what i will I just guys this is a prototype and this is how confident I am in the scratch resistance here all right that wasn't that was unplanned I didn't want to do that because it's a prototype uh, you know but gosh guys this thing has such this coating is was just it blew me away it gave me such confidence I thought I would do that right now so little beads of sweat dropping off my brow right now but I'm glad that I did that just because just to show you guys that this is no joke this isn't just something from a marketing standpoint it is actually beautifully uh, scratch resistant uh, which I, I just really get a kick out of um, now as far as the crown goes it's really nicely done um, it actually is signed. It's the right size crown. Really nice to actuate. Screw down crown, which makes 100 meters of water resistance found here. Just really, really great. And, and, and gives you, you know, uh, infinite uh, confidence in, in this particular watch. Of course, their free diver watch was a, a dive watch that was meant to be taken underwater. Um, had a screw down crown, but it was 100 meters of water resistance. And um, the fact that that was their first model and this is their second model just makes me believe that they're going to be even, you know, that this is right, right? Like this, they made a dive watch that, <laughs> that was fine for skin diving with a screw down crown, 100 meters of water resistance, and, and it worked beautifully. So I can only imagine that that same type of technology, that same level of attention to detail is going to pay dividends here, uh, giving you the same amount of water resistance. And a little side note. Um, it's definitely keep an eye out because the free diver uh, the free diver 2 is coming out soon with 200 meters of water resistance uh, because you know they wanted to step their game up so uh, side note now as far as the bezel goes really nicely done here guys one thing you probably haven't been able to tell from pictures it actually does have a really fine bevel right here that just goes around the radius of the whole thing plays with the light and then it also really plays nicely off of that beautiful chamfer that beveled edge that just oh man gorgeous then you also have drilled lugs so this thing is going to be an absolute strap monster should you just you know should you decide to take off the bracelet the nice thing is you won't have to take off the bracelet to try to preserve the condition of it uh because this thing is is, is just pretty bulletproof from that standpoint 
Now, the dial is a beautiful, you know, satin black. I wouldn't even want to call it matte black um, because of it just does have a certain level of darkness uh, that you get here that you wouldn't normally get from like a fully matte uh, finish. So it almost has a bit of a satin. It's smooth, but not glossy. Even, you know, as you can see, as I try to get the reflection of the light to really light up some of the contours on there, just really, really nice. And then you can see just, it just completely blacks out at certain angles. Then here you get just the thing lights up. It's gorgeous. Really, really great color play on that. And, and, uh, you know, pleasantly surprised, uh, by the actual quality of a black dial. Cause normally the black dial is kind of the, uh, the generic, um, safe choice. It's the one that, you know, the masses are going to purchase so you don't have to work too hard. But in this case, they really put in some effort to dial in how beautiful this thing is going to wear and appear uh, in hand and on wrist. Now, the loom itself is BGW9. This is, of course, just a prototype, so it's not going to be quite as thickly applied as the production models are going. This was more proof of concept. Um, you know, you got everything laid out. You get an idea of what this is going to look like visually. The performance isn't going to be quite as high, though, as far as the loom goes, which you guys will see once I get to the uh, low light transition to loom shots. As far as the movement goes, we get a legitimate uh, no date movement in the Miyota 9039, which is great. So there's no ghost crown position. Uh, because there's no date here so instead of just having a disc under there floating uh, they have opted for of course the the right thing to do um, and the more attention to detail uh, choice which is to get you a no legitimate no date movement which is great as far as the uh, case back you get a beautiful display case back there and you can see the really nicely done 9039 from Miyota which is really great as far as finishing goes um, it's just a one directional though when it winds so when it's going the opposite direction of winding it's going to be a little bit more freewheeling Let's see if i can get it to spin there you can see um and of course since the display case back you might uh, you might get a couple of those little whirls every once in a while as you're whipping your wrist around but for me i've actually been pleasantly surprised with how quiet uh this one has been so it's probably a lot of has to do with just the amount of security and uh, engineering that went into uh, the finishing level here of, of every component. As you can see, beautiful perlage work on this nicely tapering bracelet. It goes 20 down to 16 millimeters, uh, milled clasp, beautiful beveled chamfer there, really great. You got the uh, micro adjust there. My only uh, one tiny critique that I made uh, back to John um, was that I felt like these were almost too thin. They were so thin that when you have it on wrist, basically if you kink your wrist and it presses against there, the soft skin, when you're when you're using it with your fingers, you're fine. But basically, when your kind of soft wrist skin uh, is is hitting here, um, it can it can be, feel a little bit sharp and somehow like a champ he actually was like that's amazing feedback thank you so much for looking out so that was awesome and honestly there's a lot of watchmakers out there and brands where i've given them feedback um and people have bitten my head off because i'm basically critiquing their baby uh which they've been mulling over um you know for months and months and months and here i come and uh say what i'd like to change about it so big ups to john for just having an open mind and and taking constructive criticism so well so um really uh, quite refreshing to be able to give that level of feedback and get such a warm response to it. Now, uh, also one thing I will notice, uh, I am to mention, is that we have screw-in links. Really nice there. So everything's solid. Pretty much everything you could ask for, um, you know, in a bracelet, especially at this price point, just absolutely blown away. Um, you know, push-button clasp beautifully milled, amazing taper. Look at that taper, so refined. So you guys are going to see that on wrist right now. All right, guys, on wrist, on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, it's a real no-brainer. Look at the way that thing wears. Absolutely gorgeous. Even up close, uh, where the lens distortion is going to make things look a little oversized, it still doesn't give you that feeling. And then, oh, man, look at that beautiful taper. Down to 16. Got the milled clasp. Really beautifully done. I'm going to try to keep this portion on wrist a little bit short because I rambled on quite a bit on the on hand portion. Um, but you can see there, it speaks for itself. 10 millimeter height. That thing's going to ride underneath 
any type of cuff really easily. Not that you need it because this thing is meant for a life of adventure, but it's also just classic enough to where you can actually wear it, you know, around the office, around the house, and in uh, other types of situations. Look at the way the light plays on this finish here. The high polished beveling, very, very striking. Rides the wrist super flat, really nicely done. But let's go ahead and move in to some low light transition. All right, let's go ahead and hit the lights. As you can see, that BGW-9 is glowing quite brightly. Um, and then the dial. there's a little bit of a disparity between the dial and the handset. But uh, rest assured that um, there will be a much thicker application on the production run. So with all that said, let's actually get my little low light transition going here. If I can find it in the dark in time. <laughs> so what I like to do is do a nice low light transition just because you know what, when we have these really bright studio lights, it does a great job of simulating direct sunlight. But you know what, you're not always gonna be out in the middle of a field when you're wearing your watch. You might be, you know, coming at it from indoors, you know, coming out of some weird overhead lighting situation, um, you know, coming in and out of your vehicle. One of the nice things here is you get a little bit of a better idea of the color read because the color correction or anything, nothing's gonna be jumping in there at you too crazy um, but you also get a nice idea of the level of finishing there you can see the uniformity of the way that the light plays off of that brushing do you see how uniform that is really really finely done versus sometimes you can have a more of a hand brushed uh, appearance uh, which although hand polishing can come out pretty crazy um, hand brushing can look a little bit uh, just a little bit messier versus here you're just gonna see much nicer uniform finish and again this is not meant to be a luxury le level timepiece you know although it might be an alternative to something like an Explorer um, by no means is it meant to uh, I'd say be on that you know tuxedo level of refinement um, this is something that I think a lot of people are probably gonna think to try to compare to the Monta Triumph, um, which I think on one end of the spectrum, it can be quite uh, comparable to the Triumph as far as, you know, it's, um, it's kind of more field oriented chops. But at the end of the day, the Triumph is honestly something that's gonna be a lot closer to luxury level of finish versus this is gonna be more of a tool level watch. So I'd say I'd probably liken this more closely to something like a Tudor Ranger um, versus uh, you know, something that's that's trying to be closer to um, just that. Ooh, even though you do got the three six nine dial, um, you know, I wouldn't say it's it's uh, trying to be an explorer or anything like that, or you know, trying to have that level of dressability um, that you're gonna get with an explorer. Now, as far as uh, you know, my closing thoughts on wrist, perfect proportions, guys. Very, very comfortable, super balanced wear. The hard coating just adds a little bit of a darker tint. Again, similar to kind of Seiko's hard coat, that uh, internal Dia Shield. As far as model variants go, you're gonna have the sage green, you're gonna have the charcoal black, you're gonna also have the midnight blue. The midnight blue would be my personal pick, and it's one that I hope to add to my collection once this thing is fully funded. And watch gods, please make sure that this thing gets fully funded, because this thing is absolutely killer. Um, and guys, if you're interested, definitely get in on that early bird special at around 400 bucks. That's just insane. Now, as far as comparable models go, again, this is something more Tudor Ranger meets uh, Monta Triumph. I wouldn't uh, quite say it's trying to be super luxurious or anything like that. This thing is a tool watch uh, through and through. Um, it's not trying to be any level of luxury to it. Its greatest luxury is the capability that it brings to the table, right? It's not trying to be overly refined or super high finished. Um, but man, it does a great job with um, its kind of working finish. is is just absolutely gorgeous uh, from that standpoint. Now the bottom line, you know, this is just the fi ultimate five hundred dollar Rolex Explorer alternative. Um, you know, I think that's obviously what people are going to try to compare it to. Um, and at five hundred bucks, I mean, there's really nothing that's going to be able to compare to this watch. So that was kind of a given. But what's actually surprising is this also might just be the ultimate $500 everyday automatic tool watch period. 
um, which is crazy to say. Um, I mean, it even really makes a strong case for being the most compelling $500 one watch candidate ever. Yeah, this could be your one watch because you could just do everything in it. And, um, and it wouldn't show a lot of signs of wear because of that coating. Um, you know, just fund this watch, guys. It, it needs to be made. If you're interested in purchasing this piece, definitely check out the links. I don't think the Kickstarter will be up by the time I publish this, um, but I will have links to their, to their main website, um, which should eventually have some Kickstarter listings updated on it. So definitely check that out. Thanks for sticking with me. I know this has been a long one, guys, but I've just been gushing because of how much I believe in this particular brand and this particular watch. Really, really fantastic. Great work uh, to John and the team. So definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked the video, please do it like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.